Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to another advanced Java chess engine tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving an introduction or a big picture view of our search algorithm that we are going to implement, which is called Principal Variation Search. Now, in our simple chess engine tutorial, what we used was an, called an alpha beta pruning approach. But in this tutorial, we're going to deal with something slightly more complicated, but hopefully, in the best case scenario, it should save about 10% of the positions will not have to be searched compared to the alpha beta method. So it's a little more efficient, should get us better results. Now, let me just give you a quick overview of the previous versions of searching algorithms that led up to this principal variation search, and then I'll explain in a quick summary what this search is before we start implementing code and going into the details. So what we started off with historically was uh, searching using a nega max search algorithm. And what that was able to accomplish was it would look at every possible move from a starting position, and for each one of those moves, it would make every possible move from those positions. And so you end up getting every single possible combination, just like our perfed algorithm did, to a certain depth. And then at all the final depths that were reached, which we call leaf nodes or leaf positions, you could think of it as, we evaluate it and we decide which one looks the best and we select that path and therefore we make the first move leading to that final position. That is basically how the Negamax algorithm worked. And it was able to do uh, recognize things such as it made the assumption that the opponent would play as good as your side would. So instead of saying that I will make my best move and I'll assume that my opponent will play terribly and it looks like I'm going to win soon, it would actually, it was, the algorithm was smart enough to say, no, the opponent is also going to play smart moves and it's not going to be so easy for me to get a checkmate or something. So then from Nega Max, we moved on to Alpha Beta. And what that was able to do was say, those moves that are absolutely ridiculous, that there's no way the other person's going to play, let's not even search them. And therefore, we can leave out certain moves and all the resulting moves from that position, and it will save us a lot of time. So, for instance, we would look and we would say, oh, the opponent just threw away their queen. Well, we don't need to look any further than that. And the way it achieved that was it looked at two variables besides the evaluation for a position. It would look at a variable called alpha. And alpha basically represented the best move it had found so far. So we now, so for instance, if we see a move and we say this is a good move, we now know that the best move that we can ever find will be at least as good as the best move we've already found, as represented by alpha. And then there was a second variable, which was called beta. And beta is how we got all our cutoffs from, these moves that we no longer had to search, as represented in this picture by these little red lines and the gray squares and circles that we sort of skipped looking at because we knew that would be a foolish line and we wouldn't learn anything from those lines. And the way it did that was with this variable beta, which basically said, if it looks too good to be true, then it is. So this would represent the throwing away a queen, the moving into a spot where checkmate is guaranteed to happen in one move sort of moves. And it would say, oh, the opponent, that's just too good for it to be true. Therefore, we, the opponent will never make that move. Therefore, I don't need to search it. That's the basic general idea. And then we come up to the principal variation search. 
And what it did was it started by taking the alpha beta algorithm and they had made a realization that the most efficient algorithm always used the best move first. So we would order the moves that we would search from best to worst. And best would end up on the left-hand side of this search diagram. So hopefully this move that's a three in a circle would be better than the six in the circle and the five in the circle. And as long as the move ordering, the more accurate that move ordering was, the more efficient the algorithm would run. Now, in principle variation search, we sort of capitalize on this feature. And what we do is we do a full search for this first move, which we assume is going to be the best. And then for the next and all following moves, we just do a real quick search where we don't look at everything, but we just get a rough idea of what that position looks like. And if that position proves out to indeed be a worse move, then we just saved ourselves a ton of positions that we looked at. Since our quick little search w didn't look at nearly the number of positions that a full search would have. But in the rare cases where we find out that, whoops, we might have made a mistake in the ordering, this looks like a pretty good move after all, we have to research the position. And so the position that we'd already done a quick search on, we have to research it with a full search just in case it actually ends up being the best move. And so sometimes you end up searching twice, but hopefully as long as our move ordering is fairly good, we can avoid doing a complete and thorough search and save ourselves as I said before, about 10% of the labor. So that's the basic idea of the principal variation search, which we'll be talking about in detail in the tutorials to come. I look forward to seeing you in those tutorials. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.